Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to take a closer look at how to calculate the intensity of a multi-slit interference pattern. So for any number of slits, we're going to end up with some sort of interference pattern. On the previous several videos, you saw what some of those patterns will look like. But what will be the intensity at any location on the screen? So again, let's say we have multiple slits. We have electromagnetic radiation going through the slits at some wavelength that would be given. And so we're, we're going to be interested in finding intensity at some location on the screen. Now that can be given in various ways or maybe they want you to figure it out in various ways. Maybe they give you the phase difference between uh, two adjacent slits. Maybe they give you the angle at which you want to look from where the slits are at. Or maybe they will give you some point away from the central maximum on the screen and they want you to figure out what the intensity is at some distance away from the central maximum. So how do we do that? Well, we can take the equation that we have right here and figure out how to calculate the intensity for these various types of variables. So we're going to try to find intensity as a function of the phase angle, intensity as a function of the angle that we're going to be looking at, the look angle, so to speak, in, rel in relation to where the central maximum is in terms of angle, or we can find it in terms of how far away from the central maximum on the screen we want to know what the intensity is at that location. So as a function of the phase angle, the look angle, or the distance on the screen away from the central maximum called Y. All right, so here we have the intensity as a function of the phase angle, and that's going to be the intensity of a single phase times the sine of the number of slits times the phase difference divided by 2, divided by the sine of the phase, phase difference divided by 2, and the whole thing quantity squared. Now, how do we find it for the other two variables? Well, we know that the phase angle is equal to the, the ratio of the extra distance traveled by one phase relative to the phase right next to it, so it's the extra distance traveled right here, divided by the wavelength of the radiation, so it's going to be a ratio that typically becomes a fraction of a wavelength, and then we multiply that times 360 degrees. So if this is a fraction less than 1, the phase angle would then be an angle less than 360 degrees. You can also do this with radians, so we can say that this can be written as the extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength times 2 pi. So this will give you the answer in radians, this will give you the answer in degrees. It doesn't really matter, you can do it either way, because you're going to take the sine of, of a number that's either in degrees or the sine of a number that's in radians. Just make sure that your calculator is in the right mode when you make that calculation. Okay, we also know that the extra distance traveled here is equal to the distance between the slits times the sine of the angle theta, which is the look angle. So we can say that the phase angle is equal to d times the sine of theta divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees. I'll just continue using degrees instead of radians, but you can do it either way. And then since the angle is usually very small, the lookup angle is usually a very small angle, we know that the sine of theta then is equal to the tangent of theta. So we can say that the phase angle is equal to d times the tangent of theta divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees. And finally, the definition of the tangent is the rise over the run. So the tangent would be equal to the ratio of the height above the center maximum divided by the distance to the screen, which we will call L. So therefore, the phase angle can be written as D times the height Y divided by L. So we have lambda L in the denominator times 360 degrees. So if we want to express the intensity as a function of the look angle, we could then plug this in for the phase angle and see what we get. So in this case, if we want an equation where I is a function of the look angle theta that is equal to I sub naught times the sine of, so we have N times the phase angle. The phase angle right here, let's use this equation right here. So that would be equal to D times the sine of the look angle theta times 360 degrees divided by 2 times lambda. 2 times lambda, like this, and divide the whole thing by the sine of, we don't have an N there, but we do have the phase angle, which is this right here. So we have D sine theta times 360 degrees divided by 2 times lambda, like that, and then take the whole thing and square it. So now what we've done is we now have written the intensity 
of the various phasers come together at some location depending upon the look angle which can now be found using this equation. So the only thing you need to plug in is you need to know the number of slits, the distance between the slits, the lookup angle theta, and the wavelength of the radiation that we're using. And when you know those, you plug those in, don't forget to square this whole quantity right here, times I sub naught, that'll give you the intensity at some particular look angle. But if you want to do it in terms of how far up the screen away from the central maximum you want to find the intensity, then instead of plugging this in for, for phi, for the phase angle, you're going to plug this in instead. So now we can have the intensity as a function of the distance above the central maximum, which is equal to I sub naught times the sine of, so we have n times the phase angle, but instead of the phase angle, we're going to plug in this quantity right here, so it's d times y times 360 degrees divided by, don't forget the 2, times lambda times l, and divide the whole thing by the sine of the very same thing, except we don't have an n there, so this would be dy times 360 degrees divided by 2 lambda l, like so, and then we close brackets and don't forget to square that. So now you can see that you can find the intensity of multiple phasers coming together at the screen when the phasers went through a number of slits, whatever the number of slits are, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, just make sure you adjust for that in this equation. You can then find the intensity either in terms of the phase angle, how much of a phase difference there are between the various phases as they go through the slits, what the lookup angle is, theta, or what the distance is above the central maximum. So now you have three different ways in which you can calculate the intensity. What often becomes confusing about these problems is that they will ask it in different ways and then you forget that, oh, here they're giving me the lookup the look angle, or in this case they're giving me the phase difference, or they want to know the intensity in terms of y above the central maximum, and then you realize, realize that it's really the same equation with a very minor difference between them, so you can find the intensity in those various forms. But that's how we do that. This is how we find the intensity in any possible imaginable way that uh, they could possibly ask the question. And that's how we do that.